How can you take a Dollar Tree placemat, a simple dishcloth, and buttons and transform it into something beautiful? Well, today I'm participating in the That Is So Amazing collaboration hosted by Nancy over at Little Treasures by Nancy and co-hosted by Annie from Crafting with Indiana Jones. Make sure to check out their links in the description box and also the playlist that is so amazing. Let's jump right in. I went ahead and removed the backing from a Dollar Tree placemat and carefully cut a strip out of it. Then I held the strip up against the dishcloth and used it as a guide to cut out even more strips. Then I turned the strips inside out so that I could sew the ends together and you wouldn't see the sew marks. So I just threaded a needle and started sewing. Once that was done, I flipped the piece right side out and made sure that you couldn't see any threads. And then I did the same thing to the dishcloth piece. Once I had all of my pieces sewn, I was just deciding how I wanted to put them. And I'm going to be layering them one on top of the other. And I wanted to make sure that the sewing part was in the middle. Once I had all of the pieces how I wanted them, I took them all apart and then I started sewing them together. And just using my needle and thread, and I am using a large needle for this process, because the dishcloth is kind of thick and it's doubled, so you do need to make sure that the needle is strong enough to go through all of the layers. Have you guessed what it is yet? Using a button for the middle, I'm making a flower. Do you know how to hand sew? Hand sewing skills like these are incredibly useful to know. They come in handy when you need to sew something from scratch, make alterations to your clothes, or even mend those pesky sock holes. Yes, darning socks is a thing. So by mastering the art of hand sewing, you open up a world of possibilities for DIY projects and practical repairs. It's a skill that's definitely worth learning. Wouldn't you agree? Next, I put on the button just by sewing on the inside of it and then I sewed only on the outside and look at how cute it turned out. Next, I decided to check out the dishcloth. I folded it a few times, experimenting with different ways to see if I could fashion some sort of handbag out of it. Sometimes creativity sparks when we think outside the box and repurpose everyday items. I had to glue back on the trim that I had cut off to make the strips for the flower and I used hot glue for that. Then I folded the cloth into position and started sewing up one of the sides. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for a delightful mix of fun DIYs, exciting shopping hauls, scroll solve projects, and much more. And by hitting that bell button and selecting the all option, you'll stay up to date with all of the latest content. Don't miss out on the creative inspiration and entertainment that awaits you. Join our community and let's embark on this incredible journey together. You can also get exclusive access to my custom emojis by joining my membership, such as I don't like it, yay, 
You got this, Robin, and more. Plus, YouTube news updates and more. So sign up today. Once I had one side done, I turned over the dishcloth and I lined up the two sides on the opposite side. And then I threaded my needle and I continued to sew all the way across in a straight line. And when that was done, I gave a knot at the end, two knots actually. And then I started sewing up this other section. It was starting to come together. Before I went any further, I decided to take the rest of the placemat and I wanted to put it on the inside of the handbag just to make it a little stronger and also to have a lining. So I was just laying it down on top of the dishcloth and just deciding where I wanted it to go exactly, like how far down I wanted the placemat backing to be so that everything would fit properly. I also adjusted the end because I wanted the placemat backer to go all the way to the end of the dishcloth. So I had to pick up the whole thing a couple of times just to make sure everything was lined up well. And once it was, I put my needle and thread in and started sewing. This is a very time consuming job. I spent a whole evening working on this project, but I had something on the computer that I was watching at the same time, so the time went pretty quickly. You could do a project like this with a movie on, or when you have someone over and they're telling you a story or talking, you could be doing your sewing. I was trying to keep my two pieces of material as close as possible together and I tried not to bunch up the thread as I was sewing because I wanted it to be very straight and not pulled looking. And I'm just continuing to sew by taking my needle and pushing it into the fabric and also holding it taut or as taut as I could at the same time and just taking one stitch at a time going through the fabric with the needle and pulling it on the other side. Now I did double up my thread and I always do that when I'm sewing. Even though this thread is quite thick, I do like to double it up. How do you thread a needle? I take my two fingers with the thread and then I pull up on the thread through the eye of the needle. Then I tie two little knots at the bottom of the thread so that when I pull it through the fabric, the knot stops the thread from coming through to the other side. Once I had completed adding on the inner lining to the handbag, I placed it on the table and smoothed it out so I could see where I needed to cut. I just lined up the two pieces and then cut at the end where the dishcloth ended. And here's how it looks so far. But I noticed there was this piece hanging over, but I didn't want to cut it off straight away. I flipped it over first just to make sure that I wasn't going to be cutting off too much. And I decided to leave it on. And what I was going to do is actually fold it over 
and then sew up the folded part. I found another needle in one of my sewing kits and I decided to put that in like a pin. So I just slid it in on the part where I was sewing to keep my sewing part in place so it wouldn't move. Then I proceeded with the sewing and I did use the table to kind of push on the needle to get it through both pieces. Because it was a little difficult to get through because that was the section that I had reattached the trim to with the hot glue. And if you've ever hot glued any material and tried to sew it after, it's super hard to get the needle through. Sewing to me is like a soothing ASMR experience. Engaging in the process of sewing is not only calming and meditative, but it's also incredibly satisfying. The rhythmic motion of the needle, the gentle sound of the fabric being stitched together, and the tactile sensation of working with the thread. It all creates a serene atmosphere that can put the mind at ease. Until... Oops! My thread got all tangled up when I was sewing, so I had to untangle it all and try and save it so that I didn't have to re-thread the needle again. So sometimes that does happen and you have to be careful. Just untangle as best you can pull on the thread and try and get the knot out because you know things happen so after i got it all untangled things were going good and i was developing a rhythm as i was pushing the needle in and pulling it out I was also moving the needle that I had placed in as a pin down every so often so it would keep the fabric together. Then once that was done, I took the handbag and I tried to position it how I wanted it. I wanted to have two little flaps at the bottom, little pouches, if I wanted to put different things inside the little slots. Then I adjusted the sides on the bottoms so that I could sew them up together. And I just folded over the top into the bottom and I did that on each side just to see how it would look and how I would be able to sew it so that you couldn't see the threads. I did think about turning it inside out, but I thought that would be too difficult. So I just folded over the side and then using my needle, I tried to sew it from the inside out. Is it break time yet? Nope. I used the second needle again to hold the two pieces of material together and it was quite thick. I'm just adjusting things how I want them and I decided to fold in that bottom part. And once I had everything together, I started using my needle and thread. And it was really hard to get the needle through. And I wasn't doing the same motion as the in and then out. I was actually pushing it through so that it would kind of go in, but I was having a hard time getting it out. It was easy to get the needle 
in and you got to be careful of your fingers here you don't hurt yourself and then I pushed the needle through but it was so hard to get out but then I remembered I had this silicone mat for using with glue and sometimes I paint on it and I decided to grab the needle with the silicone mat and out it came. And I was really happy about this because it was hurting my fingers as I was trying to pull the needle out. But the silicone mat actually gave my fingers some tooth, so to speak, to grab onto the needle and pull on it. And it came right out easy as pie. Well, somewhat easy as pie. And I was so happy. What do you think of this process? What would you have done differently? Do you think I'm doing a good job? Let me know in the comment section below. Hand sewing is a great skill to have. And it's actually easy to learn. You don't need fancy equipment or machines. With a few basic skills and practice, you can become good at it. Look at me go. It's a handy skill that gives you control over your wardrobe and lets you be creative. So whether you're a beginner or have some experience, hand sewing is useful and a fun way to bring your ideas to life. Just using a needle and thread. Hand sewing is a practical skill that anyone can benefit from. By sharing this video, you're giving people the opportunity to learn a valuable and useful craft. So don't hesitate to spread the word and share this video with your loved ones. They might just find it incredibly useful and even discover a newfound passion for crafting. I finally got through that part of the sewing which was really difficult and hard to get the needle through. And I'm just adjusting it here and then I realize I've got to do the other side now. But I was more used to doing it by this point, so it didn't go that hard. And I'm just adjusting it and making sure everything is in its spot while I'm sewing up the end part. This side wasn't as hard because it didn't have the hot glue. Uh. Then I made sure everything was in its place and there was no little hairs or threads sticking out anywhere. I folded the flap over and this is how it was looking and I was in love with it. And now it's time to add the flower embellishment on and I was just deciding where I wanted to put it. If I wanted it in the middle or on the side. But first, stop! I just want to take a moment to say how awesome and grateful I am 
for all of my subscribers. You all mean so much to me and I appreciate your support. Now it's time to add on the button. And at first I started sewing in the holes of the button. So I went from the holes of the button to the top of the handbag. But I was having a hard time getting it through all of those layers. So I just took the back part of the flower and inserted the needle through the back. And then I just attached it on like that. And it held it on very securely because I made sure to do quite a lot of stitches through the back. And I kept going even just through the very back part. I put a few more stitches back there and then I tied it off with a couple of knots just to keep everything secure. And once that was done, I cut off the excess thread with my scissors. And then I started checking out my new handbag. But if you know me, I didn't like it. The sides I thought stuck out too far. So I decided to give them just a little hemming on either side. So that's what I did. I just took my needle and thread again and I hemmed both sides just to put them in a little bit. And I really liked it. After that was done, I added another layer of the back of the placemat to the inner pocket of the handbag. I just liked it more with the lining inside. It wasn't as floppy. And here's how the handbag turned out. I think it is beautiful and I'm sure I will use it maybe for my sewing accessories. I wanted to get a little piece of Velcro to put on the outside so I could close it up but otherwise I think it looks great. For more hand sewing ideas and alterations click on the next video.